Well, resilience has uh, many definitions. Increasingly, we see lots of variety of the way it's being used, it's particularly within public policy at the moment. But you know, for myself and my colleagues, and I think for most people, um, we'd see resilience as the ability to, to withstand the shock. Um, but more than that, is the ability to bounce back from a shock and, and then to move forward. And I think the crucial part of any resilience dimension is about the ability to, to adapt to change, to transform your situation, essentially so you're better prepared for the next shock, which will come in the future. There are, di there are different ways in which the term is used um, in those, those different contexts. And if you look at Welsh policy at the moment, we see references to, uh, to, to, to environmental resilience, we see references to community resilience, we see references to economic resilience. A lot of those have slight variations in how they're used. Uh, it could be about the resilience of individuals in terms of changing labour markets. How can they adapt uh, to new skill sets, new challenges, new opportunities? But at heart, I suppose, there are some key concepts. Uh, one of them is about diversity. The more diverse the assets or the attributes that we have to draw upon, the more able we are to, to withstand shocks. We have different uh, facilities and ways forward at that stage. Another aspect would be an adaptive capacity, the ability to make change from that. Um, if we're talking about economies, it might be diverse business base, which is innovative. If it's people, it might be diverse skills at that stage. I think it's a powerful message for change, to be honest, to change the way that we're doing things at the moment. The one thing I would hope is that public bodies don't see resilience just as a word to be added to things that they do already at the current time, but actually think about what they're trying to achieve as a consequence of this. Um, some of the key factors that they might want to be thinking about is perhaps helping communities to act for themselves, to give communities the ability to develop their own resilience. Uh, often the public sector can't respond quickly enough to shocks. I mean, if we look at the, uh, the snows that have been happening recently, one of the things we see is communities are pulling together helping each other out. The key part to this though is that often public sector can act as an enabling force. Um, they can facilitate communities to help themselves so they can put in, they can strengthen the capacities that people need to take on board. But it's about more than just facilitating. There's a risk if we facilitate we just step backwards, whereas actually what we should be thinking about is leadership as well, providing a direction of change. And one of the things that public services could do well is to think about that leadership role, as well as helping to, to build the assets, the capacities, the adaptive capabilities of communities to enable them to prepare for shocks and then to respond to them in the future. Well, what we did was we did a survey of a thousand households. We were interested in people's perceptions of their economic circumstances and how well off do they feel at the current time. Do they see the benefits of growth in the communities around them? Uh, do they feel confident about the future? And I think one of the uh, important messages is the pervasive sense of gloom that came through the survey results of people feeling that they were worse off than five years ago, that they were feeling insecure in the future of the economy, uh, particularly since the Brexit vote uh, as well. The problem with that is that affects how people act. Um, if people are feeling uncomfortable, if they're feeling slightly uh, at risk, then they'll act in a more cautious way. They'll probably not spend as much money, they'll save more money. That has a knock-on effect upon the rest of the economy. But we also asked people about how they felt about the support that was there. And I think it was notable that for most people, I mean, more than 90%, they basically said that if times are difficult, they look to their family and their friends for help. 75%, three quarters, said that they look to community groups, charities, maybe food banks, other sorts of community uh, voluntary bodies on there. Local government and national government came out much less strongly, less than a quarter said that they felt that they were there to help them at times of need. And I think that's an important message again for local authorities to think about how they are perceived within the community and how they might be able to respond to difficult times in different ways. I think it's a question about what we're looking to achieve. Resilience isn't simply about preserving what is there already, just conserving what we have. So often when we think about 
a resilient community, we think about, does it have the same number of jobs as it had two years ago? Does it have the same population as it had two years ago? And perhaps those are not always the best ways of looking at things. Perhaps we should be looking at goals such as well-being of communities, things that we heard about earlier today at that stage. Perhaps we should be thinking about the incomes that individuals have as well. And it could be that there may be fewer jobs, but they may be better paid in the future. If there are fewer jobs with fewer people, that doesn't necessarily mean there's more unemployment at that stage. So a slight decline in a, in a population may not necessarily be a bad thing, so long as there's still the critical mass to continue to offer the services that people want and that people feel comfortable and confident and secure in their futures.